but Lorenzo, please feel free to take your shirt off, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You leave yours on. Welcome, friends and friends, and odds and ends to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Rydell High with the cast of Greece. So, without further ado, let's go down to the Frosty Palace and see who we find. Our first guest is a writer and director whose body of work includes Big Top Pee Wee, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, White Fang, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, It's My Party, and Flight of the Navigator. Today, he joins us as the director of Grease. Please welcome Randall Kleiser. Hi there. I'm Randall. Nice <laughs> Randall. <to> all. <laughs> oh, so good to have you here, sir. How you doing? Excellent. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends that we worked with 40-some years ago on this wonderful movie. Oh, absolutely. And you are no stranger to wonderful movies. I'm a huge fan of your body of work. Uh, I, I would, I, hopefully I can sit down with you someday and talk about that at length. I would love to hear about working with Leo McKern, uh, uh, actor I absolutely adored. And I'll just put it out there. I thought you made a very good Captain America for Don Glutes, Captain America versus the Mutants. That's, that's right. It was a student film that I was in when I was 18. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Don Glute, of course, famous for his uh, the very first comic book fan films. And uh, anyway, you made a great Captain America as well as a great filmmaker. So thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> and speaking of great, our next guest is an actor whose credits include Falcon Crest, Phineas and Ferb, and of course, The Renegade. Today he joins us as, as the captain of the Rydell Rangers, Tom Chisholm. Please welcome Lorenzo Lamas. Hey, welcome, everybody. I was oh. wondering if I should take off my shirt so that I'm more... I guess, like the character I played on the movie, but I have a few more <laughs> tattoos. Randall, what do you think of these tattoos? Well, I think they should be put in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're wearing, we're wearing our masks on the intro just to stay safe, but we're indoors and uh, there's nobody around me, so I guess I can take my mask off. Hi, everybody. Uh, Good to be here Hello. With you. Oh, so glad to have can you I here, sir, it? again. Well, you can, can take, you can take off. You can take off your shirt. Your no. Can I just can I just take a second to just give Randall the, the the praise and the um, the accolades that he deserves. This movie Absolutely. that we did forty three years ago, or forty four actually, because we filmed it in nineteen seventy seven, wow. has standed the test of time. It stood the test of time. You know, every generation, every new. Grammar school generation finds this movie, and it's still a movie that we can sit down with the, the entire family and watch from beginning to end. And Randall, you delivered it, buddy. You completely, this is an iconic movie, and I just don't think you get the kind of praise that you deserve. This is, this is- We had a, a team, we had a big team. That no, I know, I know, I know. But, but, I, also, but I also know the, the challenges that you had. You know, being a fairly new director and Paramount and, you know, them saying, who is this guy? And dude, I'm just saying you have you've made a movie like Sound of Music, Rocky. You, your movie is iconic and you're to be Powerful. you're to be you're to be applauded and accoladed. Thank you so much. Everyone. It's very nice. To Absolutely. And I don't think it's it's it, I don't think it's mentioned enough. I really don't. So there you go. No, absolutely. I, I, I absolutely echo your words, sir. And welcome to our visual format. And again, huge fan of your body of work. And for whatever it is, I was and remain a fan of The Immortal. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. I, you know, I actually think that that television show, which we shot in Vancouver, we did 26 episodes in one season. It was insane. We filmed an episode every five days, Randall. Mm. And this was a, this was an action series. So we were doing wire work, we were doing special effects, and they were delivering the show every five days. It was insane. Incredible. That, was. Thank you, thank but you I, for mentioning that. It, it, it's, uh, it's a small, uh, you know, it's not as big as the syndicated show Renegade that I did that was, that was you know, internationally that very was. popular. But um, I worked my butt off on The Immortal, and I worked with Excel. some very, very talented people. And Absolutely. Uh, thanks for 
Absolutely. My pleasure. Absolutely. And speaking of talented people, let's bring out the rest of this amazing cast. Next, he is an actor whose credits include Diagnosis Murder. It's Gary Shandling's show and The Paper Chase. Today, he joins us as T-Bird, Martin LaTerry, better known as Sonny. Please welcome Michael Tucci. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey. I can't top your thing, Lorenzo, but uh, Randall's book is a bestseller, Greece. And when we did the tour with Olivia and John in Florida, uh, I think 400 copies sold within minutes. Wow. It's a wonderful book and it's all his work yeah. allowing us to ad lib and try things. And I wouldn't have had a line in the movie if it wasn't for Randall. Right, you got the good line. That whole scene no. at the bonfire, you know, at the, at the pep rally, um, they shot my, R Randall shot my close up first. So, and Olivia was off camera and Randall said action, and I looked at Olivia, and I just mouthed the words, "How are you?" Yeah. How are you? <laughs> and because Randall chose my close-up first, Olivia had to match That's right. what I did on the other side, and yeah. Randall kept it in the movie. God bless Olivia. So if it, God bless her. But if it wasn't yeah. for Randall, I wouldn't have had a single line in the movie because it wasn't in the script. Right. Absolutely. It was a good line. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, how are you in your corner of the world? Oh, nice. Uh, I'm here with my daughter, Kate, uh, my daughter, Kelly, and they're helping me on this um, adventure here. <laughs> so I'm very computer, um, you know, sunny. Well, so, so glad they can help you uh, in, in joining us here today. And real quick, uh, I loved your take as uh, Chico in uh, Gabe Kaplan's Groucho. Oh, thank you. My favorite character. Absolutely. He was great, Chico Marx. He could have been sunny. Could have been, could have been, absolutely. Uh, let's let's get the rest of the gang out. We'll go down that rabbit hole. Because next, she is an actress whose roles include Veep, Cyrus, and Ray Donovan. Today, she joins us as Pink Lady and future Ipetta toothpaste spokeswoman Jan. Please welcome Jamie Tonnelly. Hello Tonnelly. there. Mask, mask to be safe, right? Mm -hmm. Good to see you guys. Be safe in your own good home. to see all my good old <laughs> friends and some new friends here. And I'm going to unmask. It's good to see you all and to be here. I'm oh. surprised you didn't mention, though, the thing most of my fans like the best after Greece is that I was the original Magenta in the Rocky Horror Show, uh, the American Magenta at the Roxy and on Broadway with Tim Curry. Absolutely. But um, that's that's another thing I, that. I'm just lucky to have been in things people liked so much, but I, nothing, it would, nothing. It's, 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 in, it's, in my, it's absolutely in my notes. And we here at GalaxyCon are huge fans of all the versions of Rocky Horror cinematically yeah. on stage, you know, everything else. And absolutely thank you for helping, uh, helping develop that into the sensation that it was, as well as the sensation that is Greece. Greece, that's the thing. Greece <laughs> is the word. I mean, People are always saying, well, what are you going to do now? And what have you done? It's like nothing can ever touch what we did. And so just having the chance over and over to keep celebrating that is just wonderful that people want to celebrate it along with us. So we live in sort of a perpetual party state because of Greece. And you were in the original Broadway show, right? Yes, I did the show on Broadway seven years before I did the movie. So it was really, really fun. And I, you know, as Randall speaks up, I want to say I'm very happy to also be a supporter of this Randall Kleiser tribute. Because <laughs> 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 it is true. He deserves it. People yeah. just think, you know, the truth is when we were all, you know, when we were did this all those years ago, I think a lot of us thought we were really playing characters. It's like as we've grown older, we're more and more are those characters. And I think that was part of the genius of Randall was not having a set expectation of who these characters were, but sort of letting our own crazy people that we really are and really people with a lot of heart who really do love each other, let all of that kind of shine through on screen. And I think that's why we're still here today. So, so Randall, do a series, series, like in an old folks home. We're all there. People still call. We'll do this. A Patty could do the, we could do the video. It'd be great. I'm telling you. <laughs> season, we're still alive. Well, well let's, bring up, let's bring out the rest of the gang and get their interpretation on that. Yes, next. He is an actor <laughs> whose roles include Boomers, Max Headroom, and the highly undervalued CPO Sharky. Today, he joins us as the squirt gun wielding t 
Bluebird member Anthony Del Fuego, better known as Duty. Please welcome Barry Pearl. Yeah, well, thank you. Let me take. Let me let me first take the mask off, and then and uh, Lorenzo, should I also take my shirt off? Oh, yeah, no, you're yes. not going to see my tattoos. We're going to take our shirts yeah. off. You don't uh, have it. That's a tip, of the, a tip of the hat. Yeah. To uh, to my character Tom Chisholm because he yeah. never wore a shirt. And 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 you never saw my chest. Uh, well, because I was so skinny at the time, I turned to the side with it, my tongue out and looked like a zipper. <laughs> uh, but listen, let me also echo uh, uh, Lorenzo's um, praise of Randall, our our fearless leader. Because yes, you along with Pat Birch. The, the crew, the staff, Alan Carr, who was our producer. If it wasn't for all of you guys, and you specifically, Randall, because you helmed the crazy ship that we were on, um, we, we are indebted to, to you guys for um, creating this iconic uh, piece. And like Jamie says, we are a big, happy family uh, that does get to gather every once in a while, not only virtually, but uh, live and in person. And uh, thank you, Pat, and uh, and the GalaxyCon for giving giving us an excuse once again to have to listen to all, all the stuff that Tucci has to say because you know. <laughs> we put in an old folks home. It'll be a TV series, like seventy old folks. We'll okay. Great book, Randall. Sell a whole bunch of them today. Great book. Great book, as Tucci said. And just love you all. So bring out that last incredible. Absolutely. Movie. She is an actress and producer whose body of work includes Benson, Shining Time Station, and the Fonz and the Happy Days Gang. Today, she joins us as the beautiful blonde pineapple pink lady herself, Francesca Alicia Facciano, better known as Frenchie. <laughs> Welcome, Dee Dee Cohn. Hey. Dee Dee Cohn. Dee Dee Cohn. Dee Dee Cohn. Cohn. Love you, Randall. Con, 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 right. We'll be true yeah, when you're we'll not near us. We're blue or pink. We love you. Oh, listen, wow. I, I, I just can't say enough about our darling Randall. Not only is he absolutely gorgeous and as gorgeous as ever, but he really was one of the gang when we were doing the film. And he was the best audience, the best laugher, the best everything. And, and we love you, Randall. Oh, wow. I didn't know this was going to be a tribute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, uh, That's great. You know, your, your book, you know, the details of, of all the planning and everything that went into it. And then we'd come there and like do something totally different and you just would go with it. And you're amazing. You're you're just the best. We love you. What's my am I going out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're fine. Didi, how are you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. We we, we had a flood here uh, from oh. that bit, last hurricane. And it I'm still like, you know, can't believe it because it just came like this intruder came into our house. But right. we're okay. Just um, it was a quick way to clean out the basement. Let me tell you. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd do it. That would do it. So. Yeah, but well, I'm, I'm great. Thank you. But I, but Lorenzo, please feel free to take your shirt off, baby. <laughs> <laughs> But Gigi, new... when when I was Tom, I didn't have any tattoos. No. And now, now no. my body is covered. Body's covered? All right, well, we'll talk about it another time. Yeah. <laughs> so we get in the TV series, he gets all his tattoos, and he's a 70. I have, wow. a, I have a question for Randall. I have a question for Randall. So um, I guess the, the word is that Paramount really wasn't sure about John for the role. They, they were kicking around a few other names, but you had directed him in Boy in the Plastic Bubble, right? Yes. yes. Did you have any any kind of uh, a say in in that? Or did you did you want John for the role? Absolutely no say because John picked me. Uh, he was on the project, uh, projects and he said, "Hey, yeah. I work with this guy on Boy in the Plastic Bubble. I'd like to." Uh, okay. So John cast me. Really. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, so, that's great. It's it a wonderful good. story. Either either way, it's a great it's a great story. And I picked John. <laughs> oh well, hey, well, Barry, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, but Randall, the film you did about your grandparents—that beautiful film at school. What was the name of it? 
Peach. It's on, it's Peach, on that was all over the place. When you, when you know, yeah, it was Prime. beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a good yeah. entrance. Yeah, but I picked all you guys, so there you go. Yeah, right. absolutely. So thank you for that. Do you remember? Do you remember it? Right oh now? yeah, the casting was May nineteenth, May nineteenth of nineteen seventy seven. Yeah. Wow! That's wow. very very good. I, I came in. I came in a little bit later mm -hmm. uh, because originally my part was played by Stephen Stephen Ford, Gerald Ford's son. That's right. right. Oh, that's right. And, he got, he got nervous. You know, the, story, the story that I got was that. Um, and Stephen is a wonderful actor, and he, he he's he went on to do many many other motion pictures and so forth. He had a great career. Hmm. Uh, but my my the story that I got is that uh, he came to the dance rehearsals and wasn't comfortable. Is that? I think that yes, he he was surrounded by all of us. Uh, and Pat said, "Get in the middle and start dancing." He went. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, he was gone. Oh so my then, goodness! So Alan, here, here's a. Re short story. So I met Alan Carr originally at the 1977 Academy Awards where I escorted my mom, Arlene Dahl, to the, the award ceremony. And at the after party, which they called the Governor's Ball, yeah. um, I was introduced to Alan uh, by uh, Shirley Eater, who was a, a major PR publicity agent back in those days. And Shirley was a good friend of my mom's. And so Shirley grabbed me by the lapel and pulled me out of the table. I said, goodbye, mom. I don't know where Shirley's taking me. I was 19 years old and she took me to meet Alan Carr. And she looked at Alan Carr and she said, Alan, this is Lorenzo Lamas. He's going to be a big star. His father's Fernando, his mom's Arlene Dahl, and you're going to put him in a movie. Wow. And I, I shook hands with Alan Carr. I didn't even know who the guy was, but it was very nice, very friendly and so forth. And then my agent gave me a call short, shortly after Stephen uh, 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 went on to do other things and said, Alan wants to see you for a part in the movie. So I went in and all the T-Birds were cast. So there was no mm -hmm. way I was going to get in. You guys all had your parts. It was all like you were already in rehearsal. And Alan said, Lorenzo, can you dance? <laughs> and the last thing I saw was Saturday Night Fever. Oh, so no. I did, I did this thing <laughs> in, 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 front of, in front of Alan. And he goes, okay, we'll call you. And two days later, I got a call saying, you're going to go to the Paramount lot, and you're going to be in this movie, Grease. And I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God. Uh, where do I go from here? But. Oh, that's amazing. Absolutely. It's a great story. <laughs> that is fantastic. And uh, on behalf of myself, first of all, everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us all here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. We're about ready to go start the audience questions. Before that, I just wanted to thank you all for, for your contributions to this film. And just, just like what I said at the beginning, it has stood the test of time. This film has become, become incredibly iconic, incredibly beloved, and it's far more... It's, so many layers to this film that a lot of people you don't catch in the first uh, going, yeah, I saw it when I was very young. I was a kid. I was, oh, okay, I get it. It's like this way too. And then I saw it as an adolescent. It was like, hey, this is a lot more uh, uh, adult than I thought. And But it all comes back to the same thing. This film has tremendous heart. It absolutely has tremendous heart. There's such incredible joy in this film. And I just, I, I thank you all for contributing to this. I thank you all for your talents. I thank you all for your professionalism. And I thank you all for your performances or your direction. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely, absolutely. And we are good to go to our audience questions. So I will turn it over to them. Let's go ahead and roll our first one. And this comes from Madison who wants to know if your Grease character could cross over into any other TV show Past, present, or future, what show would you choose? Oh, what a good question. West uh, Wing. Oh. <laughs> West Wing. I'm thinking because I talk really one fast, one. and Aaron Sorkin's characters always talk real fast. They do. I, I'm thinking of, like, one of the makeover shows or something, you know? Um, uh, let's see. What would Frenchie be in? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I could, I could absolutely see her. Designing women on the Food Network. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like a, a new tooth TV series and just put us back into that TV series at 70, but we eat a lot of it because it's a good cater like the movie. Just to push the, se uh, the same character. Like you know, I don't really, I mean, what's the We gotta go. Happy French, days. French, Frenchie cooks French. On the cooking <laughs> French, there's, there, there's an episode. We all go to the dinner and it tastes Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody I watch Jan, your... I think Jan is a pretty big eater. So maybe she could be the person who tried out the, the food that French was making. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many thoughts. Come on, Randall, write them but, down. But, but in, in Dini's Bible of the, the, the Grease sequel that you wanted to do, Marty and Sonny wind up together. And don't they have a pizza parlor? Yeah. You know, right. That's a good idea. Yeah, well, we could be the caterers in these in the, in the old folks' home that we're all there because that's the biggest demographic, and we all got our shots. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so right. David, oh, I, I thought David Frenchie, could do the music. David Shire. Well, I thought Frenchie would be, you know, like on the Animal Planet or something that she'd be in your oh. room, or you know, she'd love to make poodles pink and. <laughs> purple and you know i could see totally that great. i could totally see that oh you know, wow jan could have been in the mickey mouse club too because <laughs> he just likes to sing and dance and laugh and have a good yeah. time you know well do me at that hollywood show with frankie avalon there were people there from 106 with his yeah. original album all humming venus if you will <laughs> I mean, it's hysterical. He could be in the show. He could actually own the old folks home that we're all in because he made a lot of money. He made like fifty-one thousand dollars of this. I mean, not to bring it up. Uh, uh, bring it up. Lorenzo, what do you think? Uh, what we, do you think? Would have yeah. We should all do. We should all do something like a sequel where I can be. I can play Sid Caesar's role as the coach. Oh, and yeah. and Didi and Didi can have a salon, and she's training the new pink ladies. Yeah. And 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 uh, and Duty and you know and Barry and Michael can can be mentors to the new T birds, and yeah. Uh, but I was thinking Friday Night Lights. You know Taylor Kitsch uh, was in this show. Uh, it was very. It was an excellent show about football. Yes. And I always thought it'd be funny if Tom Chisholm showed up. In his kind of square fifty oh, style, yeah. you know, oh, that's funny. In, in a modern, new kind of kind of you know a football type of, of show. <laughs> but no, I get the idea with Didi with the hair and also you like an old you know, film, like the TV series. People, <laughs> people, yeah, with people the old oh, so and their nails. It's very important, don't you think? I just want to be. I just want to be Chris Diesel. That's all. I just want to be him. You want more uh, than one one line, is what you want. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like if Greece yeah. was happy days, we'd be wealthy. Greece was a one shot, but forget the shot. It was gone with the wind, sound, and music all together. It was frightening. Yeah. And the transition as a musical, you know, was fabulous. Randall, uh, so where would you? Uh, Randall, where would you send these characters to? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think they're so creative. I'm listening to all these ideas, and uh, <laughs> these guys are not just actors; they're writers. I can tell. You know, I uh, I think um, it's worth a um, brainstorming session to figure that out. <laughs> Maybe we all go. work at a school that you are the principal of. <laughs> Randall, oh, I'll give you like five jokes for the next sequel. Five. And, five. And they, and there you go. Madison, great question to start us off with. Thank you so much. What do we have next? Here's one from Dylan, who wants to know, what went through your head on your first day on set? Oh. My bottom. <laughs> what? Grateful. Very grateful. <laughs> Changed my life. Well, I had a good time with, with Olivia because she was very nervous. And and um, she never improvised before. So while we were waiting oh. to make our entrance, I just started. Wow, I'm so happy to have you as my neighbor. I always wanted a blonde neighbor. I don't know what I said, but I just you know, and tell me what it was like growing up in Australia. And all of a sudden, she said, oh, it was you know, we had to wear gloves, and there was a boy's entrance and a girl, and she just started improvising. And when Randall said action. We just were uh, right into it. So that was fun. You know, I was such an old pro of doing two other movies. That was it at that time. <laughs> but it just, we just got into the flow. One of the things that 
was great that I've never done anywhere else, which once we got in the makeup chair, we were those characters. And we played a game where we called each other by a character's name all day long so that there was this constant improv going on. And it was great because it gave us the license to be, you know, as, uh, you know, as uh, fun and horny and whatever, you know. <laughs> well, we were all <laughs> very personal too, you know what I mean? That's a, a, yeah. a relationship we all had as, right. as characters. We also did it in our personal life. It was just an amazing yeah. situation. And yeah. what was also, also great were the people who did the show before, like, Barry and, and Jamie and you know uh, all the and people Michael. who were and, yeah that were Thank in you, the, Barry, you're a good boy yeah <laughs> that were in the uh, uh, the uh, either Broadway version or the uh, you know First one of national. the road companies the national companies and Jeff, so they were really good already you know and yeah. they helped you know they rubbed the grease on us, so that was that was really great. Well, Steve, Steve, what, what, there was the first day on set, but then there was the first day of rehearsal, rehearsal. before we went before the cameras. That's what and I was going to talk about. Don't, don't know that we, there were three. There was three weeks of rehearsals uh, that ended actually in a performance where everybody who was working on the Paramount lot came to watch, including Nicholson and Michael Landon and many others, but. So there are two first days. There was the first day in the, which was a big party, Randall. Isn't that correct? It, isn't that how it was the first day uh, of rehearsal? There was uh, yeah, a sock hop, a sock hop. And yeah. Pat put, made everyone dance, which was very, very smart because it became like a party and it wasn't like a rehearsal the first day. Well, yeah, thank God she hired Kelly Ward as Putsy. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. taught us all how to dance, everybody. Yeah. And I was looking at Barry's feet and I was okay. <laughs> well, you know, I, go ahead, Dee. Go ahead, Dee. No, I was going to say that I tell a story to people who say, "Well, I'm an actor. I'm not really a dancer. And when I go to a dancing audition, I see the combination. I said, bye bye.' I said, "Don't do that," because I was so flummoxed at our audition about dancing that I asked Kelly. I, you know, I said, "Kelly, I don't know why, but every time everybody's going right, I'm going left. I'm <laughs> counting. I don't know what's wrong." And I couldn't get it right. And when we were filming that scene, Pat came up to me and said, remember in the audition when everybody was going right and you were going left, do it. <laughs> so that was, you know, I was a normal person. Yes. Dance, you know? But you know, it's funny, Didi, you've told that story before. And in my memory, and, and I don't have as good a memory of events as you all do. You, crazy. <laughs> but I remember that in that sequence where every the, the entire room is going one way and the two yeah. of us are going another, and of course your eyes go right to us. It was a, a focus sucker, if you will. I thought we actually made a mistake. I thought <laughs> no, it was just no. the wrong way, and they kept it. But you, you no, remember Pat you told me to. Pat told me to do it. So you dragged me that way. Yeah. I was just going to say, too, that the way that we started rehearsals, as you say, was like a party. And and Alan Carr, I remember they brought him in. They rolled him in. He was on <laughs> wheels. Right. Remember that? Yeah. Was art, and he kind of came in and it was like the emperor had arrived at the party. <laughs> and it was like, as long as this is fun, we keep going. And when it's not fun, we stop. This is a party from beginning to end. And, and it was, I was quite secure actually i wasn't so nervous because i had done the show i knew i knew basically pat's steps i knew i knew my character but we got to just dance and party and not worry about whether we were you know what we were going to do on the day and then we started dance rehearsals which we did for three weeks wasn't that right guys it was a three yeah, week three weeks. Two or three weeks of just dancing Inches. and working on the musical numbers singing and right. i was just Lord, by the fact that again we're mentioning Kelly Ward here. Kelly was my partner, my putsy, and he mm -hmm. could do anything that Gene Kelly could do. This oh. guy could dance. Wow. Yeah. You can't see all of that in the movie, but he was a spectacular dancer. So, for example, I look at the movie now at the in that last toward the end where we're all waving up at the at John and mm -hmm. Olivia going up in the plane. And I look at it and I realize, oh my gosh, I, there I am. And one minute I'm standing on the grass and, and I just jump up onto Kelly's shoulder like I was jumping up onto the counter. Yeah. And, 
Wow. He, that's because he knew how to do a lift, really. I mean, I've done yeah. some too. Well, I, I remember a lot of Broadway shows okay. before I did Grease. So I was kind of more comfortable in the musical part to begin with. But it was just like, I just jumped up on his shoulder and he just made sure I got there. And it just looks wow. like, oh, that's the best way to wave. So yeah. I, I was just in heaven knowing through these dance rehearsals that I had a guy that I could look good no matter what, because he was just a superb partner. In the Randall, you were to say something. Yeah, I just remember on the first day showing up and seeing the big Panavision camera and, and the crew and all the people and, and it was so exciting. And then to work with all of you who had been on the Broadway stage and, and, and helped me through this because you know, I had so much on my plate trying to make this big movie for the first time. And you all had already knew where the laughs were and, and how the, what the staging was. So I just sort of like guided you all. It was it, yeah. it made it very easy for me. Yeah, there you go. Lorenzo, what was your caterer? We always had a good caterer. Remember when oh. they did the brusher, brusher, brusher? Then we had lobsters and crab. And I don't know. <laughs> so why? I don't know. <laughs> so Lorenzo, what was your first day like? Surfboards. Well, I didn't have all the experience. I didn't have all that experience that that you all so wonderfully had. I showed up on the Paramount lot with a surfboard in my car, two of them, and had absolutely <laughs> no clue what was about to happen to me in my life. Wow. Uh, two beautiful I was women girlfriends in the car. Beautiful girls from Malibu. No, oh, that. that that, that was there. Gucci, that you came were all back. in the background. So, I forget. <laughs> Fabulous. You, yeah. you knew. I showed up on the set with, with no experience dancing whatsoever. And to, to echo Dee Dee, in, in a sense, Pat Birch was a godsend to me. Because I came up to her. I introduced myself. You guys were all in rehearsal. You had been in rehearsal for a week and a half. I came in late. I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to dance. I didn't, I mean... I just, I mean, I mentioned I'd seen Saturday Night Fever. That was it. So Pat comes up to me. She goes, hi, I'm Pat Birch. I'm the choreographer. You're Lorenzo? I go, yeah, I'm, I'm Lorenzo. I guess I'm playing this uh, part of the jock. And she goes, what can you do? <laughs> and I said, well, I have a black belt in karate. She goes, okay, well, show me, show me what, what kind of, what, show me something that you can do. So I did a kata. I did a karate kata for Pat Birch. Mm -hmm. uh, a form, and she said, that, with that? And this woman <laughs> took me aside and gave me those steps that I did, you know, the this thing with the, the knees yeah. and the thing. I yeah. said, I play football in high school. She said, we're gonna, we're gonna be, you're gonna be fine. She said, you're gonna be fine. And that just lifted all this pressure off of me. Oh, I felt cool. that this wow. woman had my back. You know. Well, Pat yeah. was great at casting people that moved yeah. well. In fact, right. she was in the basement at that. Was it the Royale? The Royale? Greece was? Well, that's where the, that's where the Royale. Royale. Yeah. When we auditioned, she came over to me, says, Tucci, and this was, you know, said, you move well. Don't worry about it. You move well and stop looking at Matt Landis' feet. Yeah. <laughs> but then we both got cast. And in 66, oh, a uh, big part in 1967, 1967 and 68, I had worked with Pat the first time in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Oh, and she was did. known for taking non-dancers and making them look like they can dance. She had a knack. Yeah. So just like you say, Lo, that she took what you knew, you know, what you knew to do, phys your, your, the physical stuff that you could do, and she made that, you know, your yeah. handle, if you will. She just had, she has, she's still around. <laughs> That I, amazing ability to do that, right, Randall? Yes, I remember when she was when we were doing Grease Lightning, and she explained that this whole thing of, of going like that was to make it easier for people who weren't super dancers to. That's right. Uh -huh. oh, wow. Now, one of the reasons why Sonny, originally played by Jim Borelli in the play, uh, if you if if you've ever seen the play, Sonny doesn't dance. Sonny gets drunk at the dance, and of course, we have a little taste of that with you, Tucci, by pouring the, well, you get drunk at the, at the dance, but Jim Borelli's strong you suit. Said to me, say anything you want at the, when you get to the bowl. Just when you yeah. look at the bowl, whatever you got, whatever comes out of your mouth, that's what, and that was the first shot. 
that you're right. I'm just uh, yeah, what did you say? I'm watering the plant. What is your line there? Oh, I'm, I'm washing my hands. Washing your hands, which yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. But, it was the road in the book. But but uh, uh, the point is that Borelli really could not dance. Wasn't the greatest singer. So Sonny didn't dance at the dance. Nor does Sonny have a song in the in the play. You know, his strong suit was his acting and and just he was Sonny Jim Burrell, the original uh, uh, Sonny so that's how that was formed originally as I understand it you may have more of a handle on that Jamie than me because you were involved with the play before I was I did I did the show with Borelli yeah I came in right I was the first replacement for Jan yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you know it, it, he didn't have that eager thing that I think mm -hmm. most of us have which is like just show it to me. I can do yeah. it. No, even if it doesn't look yeah. good now, I'll work on it. I'll get it right. You know? He was more like, no, don't do yeah. that. Yes. You know, <laughs> he was more like, uh-uh, somebody else. You know, that was his sonny. That was his sonny. That's right. I think per, uh, Pearl's character in the movie is closer to Sonny in the play than Sonny, and I'm closer to Roger because he was and never really he's not in the and, movie. And Putsy was duty in the play. Right. Right. No. It's, you know why uh, Randall they flipped that all around? Is it because the, they like the name Putsy, or what was that about? Uh, that was Alan's idea. But you know, the reason that all the, the things got mixed up is that the writer Bronte Woodard didn't really see the play, so he just sort of <laughs> made it all up. <laughs> yeah. I oh remember, wow. I remember. The, <laughs> I remember us finding that secret room. Do you remember that? And we had the script, and you had the play script. Yeah. You were finding things that you had said in the in the show that you, you weren't in the Bronte script. And you, right. were, well, and yeah. did you remember that, that secret little room we found? Yes, yes. we were putting yeah. stuff from the play back into the script. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Hey, so uh, protect, protected from the eyes of the WGA, huh? Yeah. Well, when I went in, Alan, Alan said, "Have you?" I had the script in my hand, and Alan said, "Where'd you get the script?" And I said, "I got it from John, the the original script." He said, "What do you think?" And I says, "Well, and I'm not a writer, but there's no Roger. There's no <laughs> guy. Uh, hey, what about me? How are you? There wasn't that guy." They said, "Well, do him." So when I sang, I, I basically was Roger, and I did Mooning. Wow. So, you know, it's interesting. Well, and Pat said, you're, "You're not Sunny. You're you're, you're a Roger." Going going back to the dancing, so Barry is a fabulous dancer, but because I screwed up, you took on the character of someone who couldn't dance, which yeah. was really brilliant, you know. And it, turn me as something, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that, that just dance. came out of the moment. It was so great. Yeah, for all the yeah. pineapple yeah. thing, that was <laughs> yeah. that was. What's our next Absolutely. question, Patty? Absolutely. The Dylan, thank you. That took us a bunch of rabbit holes, a lot of fun. And here's one from Brian, who wants to know, do you have a favorite line from the film? Oh. Tell me about it, stud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think man, I think the only man you can depend on is your daddy. I think. Yeah, that's a great line. That's a great line. got a bun in the oven. And, and, and bun in the oven. Well, I gave you that. I gave you, you gave me that. Coming but out the of the line I say yeah. most, What? The line I say most, which I think, and I can't, you guys will remember better who's, I think I might say it in the movie. Maybe you say it in the movie, Didi, but it was your idea, I think, which was when we were figuring out how how Conaway, Kanicki was going to get hit in the head. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you, and, and it, it was... Find a penny, pick it up all day long. You'll have I good agree. luck. Yeah. I find myself every time I see a penny, I'm like, find <laughs> yeah. a penny, pick it up all day long. You'll right. have good luck. Yeah, that Is that you? I I yeah, I always that remember Marty? that. Yeah. Marty, Brad, I, did you remember figuring out how you could make it really look like you got it hit happened and without us killing ourselves? <laughs> so, guys, yeah. hold on one second because I, I'm confused. So was it was it John's was was it John's um, number a grease lightning or was it no it was it was Kinnicky's number it was Kinnicky okay mm -hmm. so how did that how did that how did that happen Randall well we had uh, a star named John Travolta uh, and we had to give him a, a number and so we took it away from Kinnicky and gave it to him it was it was purely for uh, you know Paramount wanted to have John do a number so. 
unfortunately I had to tell Jeff Conaway it's not your number, but we tried to give him little bits in the in the show to uh, yeah. Well, you know, he, yeah. he was brilliant. he's brilliant in the movie. He's yeah. he's absolutely yeah. he was an incredible actor. And yeah. I, yeah. I understand that Jeff played he played Danny on stage. It was great. Yes, he did. That's when I first saw it, Lo. When I before I went into the show, right. uh, the play, the stage play. He was the first Zuko that I ever saw, and in my life, he was. Yeah. We were pals as kids. He was yeah. Zuko then, and what? And with all due respect to John and his brilliance, Jeff's Zuko was unparalleled and that's with respect to barry bostwick as well yeah from my, for my money it was jeff all the way but dude but the how, how, how said it was so true and we all just saw saturday night fever oh uh, yeah and, all and, all rough cut and forget it oh, i mean this guy was a star yeah. and then he asked yeah, stock and i was watching her. wait wait and stock had said and john very shy and i had say so what do you think and Stockett yeah. said, you're going to be the next Ru Ru Rudolf Valentino and walked yeah. away. And boom, he became a star. Oh, yeah. And Olivia was already a star. Yeah. You know, yeah. When people were coming in the room, any of those guys, Chubby Chase, I mean, uh, Henry Winkler came in. You know, they knew Travolta. Oh, my God, this guy is just No, becoming. there's no question. John's charisma is, is uh, uh, I mean, just. This Tom is brilliant. Beautiful. It's amazing. But yeah. but my, my question, particularly to, to those of you that saw Jeff, in the in the lead, how was it on the set watching Jeff watching John? Crazy, mm. right? For mm. me, it was fine to watch. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, they were good friends. I felt that, yeah, friends. right, and I felt that he was settled. You know, but it was with, tough. Yeah, but Jeff had a lot of those situations like that sometimes. What an amazing, when what an amazing old, guy, and we all missed much. Remember that? Oh, and I hug, and then they break away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, they loved true. each other. Yeah. Yeah. They really that was all did love each other. That, that I'm, cool. I'm just, I'm just going to say, I was, I was lucky enough to do a, do the show with Barry Bostwick, with Jeff Conaway, me too, with Richard Gere in the role oh. actually, because oh, wow. uh, he was the understudy when we were on right. Broadway at that. Be and then he went off and did it in the London Company, and John, and I think everybody benefited from from uh, from Barry's. Oh. Barry like set the set the yeah. standard and and the caricature in a sense. A yeah. lot of the stuff that you see uh, that that we know works as with laughs, you know, the physical shtick at the drive-in, that kind of stuff. That, you know, Barry was great at at establishing all that. But I I would just say, you know, Jeff um, Jeff had Jeff Jeff took put it all out there in another way. There was nothing, there was nothing, he was sort of out of control. He was unbridled. He was unbridled. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think, I think he was an unforgettable person as a human being. And I thought he, he was, a, he was a fantastic Kanicki, but he kind of did play Kanicki. Like, like Zuko. He played Zuko. Yeah. I mean, the guy who originated Kanicki, Tim Myers was a very, very different type. Very. Like he was like a, he was like a, he was like so a I think Jeff just, yeah. Jeff just brought his yeah. Zuko performance and did it right. as Kinky yeah. in a way. Yeah. Is what it seems as like. As we all did. As, as, as Michael brought his Roger to Sonny, as I brought my Sonny to duty. And, of course, uh, 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 Kelly had a frame of reference. He knew the play. So his, his putts, which is duty, he had it down perfectly. Same goes for you guys, you know, uh, Aditi and, and, and oh. Jamie. You all brought those elements so beautifully to your characters, you know. And Dinah, oh, 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 my, my just favorite line but in the in the show, but in the movie, believe it or not, is the moment when Putsy says, where'd you get this uh, uh, fender from and you and I to turn and say your mothers. No, you ask it, and, and then Putsy and I turn and say your mothers. You know, remember that? <laughs> That's and in the movie life. with having Kelly there. Pearl's mind doesn't stop. I mean, just yeah. constant <laughs> things coming up. And, and I said to Kelly, we just gotta let it go. Let Pearl yeah. run it, and we'll just kind of fit in. And you know, and I'm a pain in the ass too. But Kelly was just saw the two of us and just fit. 
in there perfectly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Ab absolutely. Lorenzo, did you have a favorite line? You only have um, one. <laughs> no, I was well, thinking, from the, not necessarily. I was, you know, no, I was thinking of Michael's line uh, uh, during the musical number. Uh, the first musical number where we first hear John sing to Olivia and, uh, you know, about the summer, summer nights. And uh, well, you had a line, Michael, that said, uh, did she put it out? Or what is that line that you say in the, in the song? Can she get me a friend? Can she get me a friend? Can she give me a friend? Yeah, can, get, can she give me a friend or something like that? And, and, uh, and Barry, you kind of do the comb thing. You know, no, actually, uh, no, Jeff did the comb thing in his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. great. That was great. Yeah, and then yeah. when they hear yeah. Randall, you get the boink. Boink. The boink. Yeah, the boink, yes. <laughs> yep, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I don't think I have a favorite line as much as Didi. You have my favorite gesture, the weird little shoe hex you give at that pep rally. It's like, no, Sandy is under my protection and the protection uh -huh. of the pink ladies. Go off with you now. We used to do what? that in high school. Ooh, yeah, just the poof. Yeah, okay. just absolutely. <laughs> Everyone, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we take our leave? If we is the word. Admit, Grease is the word. Absolutely. Yeah. And a, a TV series of, of all the people would be a very good idea. <laughs> no, there's, a lot of, with streaming, there's a lot of stuff. We have what one last stuff? thing to say, guys. Oh, what? Wow, blue pop. Oh, it has been my delight to host you all here once again thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage thank you to our audience for joining us today and thank you for your great questions hope to see you all again soon until then bye bye everyone take care and remember smiles are free please spend them all bye patty bye everybody